Hello and welcome to another video. As you can see, I've got my Canoptech Wraiths from my Necron Force in front of me. And uh, if you saw the video before where I showed off my Necron project and how that was getting along, you'll have seen that I had a lot of unfinished Necrons and I decided that it was time to get everything done and painted. So here is the Canoptech Wraiths that I've built and finished painting. Uh, it took a while to release another video because I was going back and painting, uh, finishing, putting all the final little touches uh, on all the Necrons that I had half finished um, and like half painted. Um, so everything from the first video uh, that was mostly painted um, is all now finished and varnished and this is now the first complete unit that I've finished separately to that. So let's have a look at them. So as with the rest of my force, I've gone with a very silver and copper colour scheme. Um, so uh, the main sort of armour is, is like a coppery screaming bell colour. Uh, and then the rest is just a normal kind of silver necron um, lead belcher colour scheme. Um, and if you saw the other video, uh, which I'll pop a link for, um, I'll, you remember that I was talking about how I really wanted the green colour to pop um, so I ended up going with a really really vivid green colour um, and then covering that with Tesseract Glow just to make it almost like a very neon colour. I built the first three Canoptic Raids pretty much exactly how the instructions told you to build them. Uh, so that means uh, I did snip off the pegs that are on the arms um, because that allows you a bit more movement of where you place these first front uh, claws. Um, so I did move them a little bit, but after I got through the first three and built those, the next three I completely changed the angle of how the claws were. And I'd really recommend going, being experimental with, with how much you move the claws around because you'll see these first three Canoptech Wraiths are still really cool. They, uh, they, you know, they look like they're pouncing up. I really like what I did with the base, where it looks like it's curling around this stone in the ground. But yeah, this is the third of the the first batch that I made, and you can see, you know, I, I just kept the the claws very just straight. Um, you know, there's nothing really fancy going on with all of the limbs. Uh, they're all very just kind of you know pointing downwards, um, and it's mostly meant to look like this one's just firing its gun. And so then when it came to making the next three, uh, I had a lot more confidence to position the limbs in different ways. So you'll see with this one, I really moved the limbs um, and I, I looked at the direction that the body was making it look like the, the Canoptic Wraith was moving. So it made it look like it was kind of swinging round, uh, I thought, because of the tail. So I then positioned the claws in a way that made it look like it's kind of like spinning around um, so my advice would be you know definitely be brave and really position the, the claws a lot because it, it adds a lot of flavor to the model on all of these Canoptech wraiths I've done a lot of scratching so literally just taking lead belcher and dry brushing over the edges just to make it look like they've really been through the wars um, and did a, a heavy um, Adrax Earthshade wash over them because you know these things are skittering around all over the floor. I want it to look like they're they're in the the muck, they're they're scratched, and really wanted them to look weathered. And this is the second to last wraith. Um, he's another one of the tall ones, and I wanted all of the wraiths to have a bit of personality, and each look different. Um, so again, you can see I've really positioned the, the limbs in a, a much different angle um, and on the base uh, This is another one of the ones where the uh, tail is curling round something So at a quick glance, I wanted the, the one that's going around the rock and this one to look different uh, So I added an arm from one of my Space Marine chapter uh, Marines and uh, and I even put a bit of blood for the blood god on there just to make it look like he's torn this limb off and it's almost like he's guarding this this bit of prey that he's had. And then the sixth and final wraith and as you can instantly see uh, I really customized this one to make it look like he's sprouting out of the ground um, and to achieve this I had to trim off the tail and then I glued it to the base 
And then what I did was get some milliput and I sculpted it around the bottom of the base, uh, built it up and sort of almost made it look like a, a flower petal, you know, really, really using a lot of water to sculpt it and push the rims up um, and, you know, make it look like the, the earth was being moved and, and that the wraith was coming out of it. And then I did my normal basing technique over the top of it, so just PVA gluing on some sand and little um, modelling stones. And I also made sure to super glue some slate onto the base first uh, so that I could then sculpt the milliput around it and make it look like the ground was coming over the top of the slate. So that really helps to sell the effect that this ground is being pushed up by the wraith. And I'm really, really happy with how this one turned out. The body that I used was this one. So that was the one that I thought had a, a very unusual shape to the tail and I thought that if I doubled up on this one it was going to be very obvious um, because you know obviously there's only three poses and you're, you're spreading that across a squad of six so there's going to be duplicates but I picked one um, thought that this one was probably going to be the, the easiest one to spot that it was a duplicate and so and it also had a nice arch to the tail so that was the easiest one for me to turn it into one that was spraying out of the ground. You can see that with the odd one they've had uh, a slightly thicker wash put on them um, as in I've either just watered down one a little bit more or, or less and so that's caused it to, like this one on the right, uh, definitely looks uh, a lot darker, um, looks like it's have, had a heavier wash on it. Um, and normally I'd be a little bit annoyed about that, I, you know, I want things to be uniform but at the same time these are you know, metallic constructs, they, they've all been through different amounts of wear and tear so I think it helps to actually make each one look a, a little bit unique um, and different that they, they sort of have, you know, slightly different weathering levels. So there we go, that's another unit finished for the Necron project of 2024. Um, I hope that you found some parts of it inspiring um, and maybe some techniques were useful to learn, uh, especially like sprouting out the ground um, and how I achieved that and yeah hope you enjoy and look forward to more thanks for watching